Hi, in this course we'll be covering quite a bit of hardware and we'll be doing a lot of experimentation with it. So in this lecture and in the next lecture I'd like to walk you through the hardware and the tools that you'll need to be able to follow along and do the experiments along with me. For example, things such as an LCD screen and buttons shield, um, a microphone, an infrared motion sensor and many other bits and pieces. Let's begin then with having a look at the various components that you need. No need to take notes of course as I'm going through the various bits and pieces because I've got everything documented on my website. So go to my website at texplore.com parts for Arduino Step by Step 2017 getting started or just follow the link on the screen and you'll find here that I've got all of the uh, parts that I'll be using in this course listed here. You can either purchase them from my Amazon affiliate store, which is uh, probably a good thing to do if you are in the US. If you're not in the US, then just know that you can have all these components forwarded to you using a mail forwarder or a mail forwarding service. Uh, but you can also simply just uh, use the names of the parts and have a look either at your local electronics store or on eBay and uh, you'll be able to find equivalent or the identical parts as well. So most of these parts are commodity items. So for example, the uh, the range sensor, the ultrasonic range sensor, this item here, for example, you can find it at a variety of prices on eBay, your local electronics store or on Amazon. And uh, in almost every case that I've seen, except for a couple of duds, uh, those have worked identically. So you can shop around to find uh, a supplier that will supply you with the right part, of course, and ship within a reasonable amount of time. I very often purchase my parts from eBay vendors shipping out of China and in Australia that takes about maybe four weeks to arrive so I can plan ahead in order to get better prices. And if I'm in a hurry and I need to get a lecture done or a gadget completed, say, <laughs> quickly has a matter of urgency right now, then I'm going to run to my local electronics store and buy something usually at a more expensive price. So typically planning ahead pays off in terms of uh, getting better prices for the same thing. There are some other parts that, like for example this RGB color sensor that you see here that for things like that because they are a little bit more expensive parts and a bit more complicated uh, I almost never buy those things off eBay unless I'm sure that they're selling the original genuine part like in this example the other fruit part because those are more complicated more expensive items are much I prefer to spend a little bit more money to be sure that I am getting the right part but for other things such as the photoresistor these are truly commoditized uh, you can safely go for the cheapest part on eBay and you'll get something that actually works. So let's go and have a look now at the actual parts. As far as the components are concerned, not the tools, but the components, this is everything you'll need. Let's uh, start, of course, with the Arduino Uno. You're going to need one of those. Uh, there are many Arduinos out there, many different kinds of Arduinos. There's the Mega, there's the Duo, there's the Zero, and many others. But we'll be starting with the Arduino Uno, in my opinion, the best Arduino for somebody just starting with uh, their Arduino adventures to begin with. So I also suggest that you purchase a genuine Arduino. Um, simply because you have much better chances of getting an Arduino that actually works well. The components are all uh, well, uh, high quality components. The headers will last for a long time, uh, uh, connecting and disconnecting jumper wires, uh, the, the capacitors, the power subsystem, all the things that make up 
the Arduino and go onto the Arduino board are typically higher quality than the equivalent compatible Arduino Uno that you can get for a fraction of the cost. Uh, once you have a genuine Arduino Uno and understand how it works and you know what to expect from it, then uh, by all means you can go ahead and buy something cheaper so that you can also just perhaps leave integrated with your uh, gadgets instead of having to pull apart every time that you finish something. So. The Arduino Uno is your first and most important part that you need for this course. And have a look at some simple components on this breadboard. Of course, a breadboard is another thing that you need, but I classify that as a tool more than a part. Uh, you need a, a breadboard, obviously, and then I've got a few things connected to it. You need a photoresistor that uh, will enable you to detect light. Uh, this component here is a... 10 kilo ohm thermistor. So it's a very simple component that we use to measure temperature. It's an analog component. Another component or sensor that we can use to measure temperature is the TMP36, this little thing here that a lot of people confuse for a transistor. So this is the TMP36, which is another very simple and cheap analog temperature sensor. Then we've got LEDs. Uh, LEDs come in a variety of types. You can get the big ones like this one or like this one here. Doesn't really matter. Uh, electrically, they behave in a very similar way. The differences are so small in terms of the electrical characteristics that you can ignore them. So I very often go for the large LED just to make it stand down, just becomes very bright. We are also going to be looking at color LED. So this one here is still an LED that makes it possible to produce any color you can imagine. Uh, it's got, instead of just the two pins coming out of it, it's got four pins because inside it contains multiple LEDs, a red, green, and blue one. And we also have push buttons. So we'll start using push buttons early on in this course. We also have potentiometers. So these are variable resistors that you can use to produce an analog output that we can measure. And as such, we can control an aspect of a sketch running on the Arduino. So you'll need one of those as well. To test LEDs, you will need a three volt battery. So this way we can make sure that our LEDs are actually working. So have a good uh, operational three volt battery with you for the LED lectures. Let's have a look at other things. Hmm. So we've got a couple of microphones here. There's a section that looks at microphones and how you can use them to allow your Arduino to detect sound. We've got a couple of different types here. This is uh, a more basic analog microphone while this one here combines an analog microphone with a digital microphone and I'll be explaining what the differences are. So consider getting both. Speaking of light sensors, I'd like to show you then a couple of other breakouts, line sensor breakouts, these two. So this one here, the smaller one, uh, detects light, but it detects ultraviolet light unlike the photoresistor, which detects visible light. And this breakout here uh, allows us to measure the color, or to detect the color of an object right in front of the sensor. So we've got three different light sensors, visible light, uh, ultraviolet light, and color light. Still on the topic of light, this sensor here allows us to detect a hot object in front of the sensor, like for example, a human body, which has a temperature that is above the ambient temperature of a room in which the sensor is monitoring. So you can use this to detect a person entering a room and build your own alarm, for example, a security system. So this one is a pyroelectric infrared sensor. It detects infrared radiation. Definitely need one of those. 
And we've got a, a bunch of sensors that allow us to measure various environmental variables. Let's have a look at them. So <laughs> there's quite a few of them. Environment sensors are very popular among beginners because they are likely to build uh, simple environmental monitoring gadgets. So if, uh, what I've got here, for example, are two very popular sensors. This one here is the BMP080, which has really been superseded by the BMP180 and then uh, also BMP280. So whichever you want to buy or you can find uh, in the market is fine because these are sensors that are pin compatible it means whatever i show you will work in the same way among these three sensors i would recommend that you get the bmp 180 if you have a choice then here we've got the dht22 which is another super popular sensor in the market it's uh, very simple to use i strongly recommend that you get one of those especially since you are getting started then apart from these what I've got here is the MCP9808, which is a very accurate temperature sensor. Although you can measure your, your temperature with the uh, DHT22, your accuracy would not be as good as using an MCP9808. And this one here is the uh, BMP280, which is the most recent successor of the BMP180. These are sensors from Bosch. And you can see the little component in the middle almost of the board, this little thing here and this little thing here. Those are the, the sensors from Bosch. And then the manufacturer has put those onto a breakout so that it's easier to use. Then we've got sensors that detect movement. There's a lot of sensors that detect movement in the market, but the one that we'll be spending our time with in this course is this one here, the ADXL335. It's a very common accelerometer sensor. You can find these at very low prices on Amazon and on eBay. And there's many others which I'm not going to be covering. They've got various different types of features and um, characteristics that are not necessary for us right now we'll be concentrating on the ADXL 335 so definitely get one of these as well then for detecting distance in front of a gadget we'll be using an ultrasonic distance sensor like this one here it's a HC SR04. It's a commodity sensor. A lot of manufacturers make these and you should be able to get them easily at around say five dollars. I typically buy quite a few of them so I can use them in uh, multiple projects simultaneously. For making noise we'll be using buzzers. So both of the buzzers that I'll be demonstrating in this course are passive buzzers as opposed to active buzzers. I really like passive buzzers because you can control the tone so that you can get your Arduino to play music and it can also control the volume which is something that you can't do with a digital buzzer. Now the difference between the buzzers that I've got here although both of them are passive is that this one here can also receive external power so it is louder this one here is not a powered buzzer so it tends to have a lower volume than the active buzzer but both of them actually uh, work really well and they can play music or at least you can get them to play different tones so get a couple of these very cheap devices Finally, we've got LCD screens. So the best way to get started with uh, integrating a screen or a display with your Arduino is to use a character LCD screen. And these are examples of such screens. They allow you to display uh, two rows of text in 16 columns so quite a bit of text you can insert here um, the, the easiest uh, simplest way to connect a 
SD screen to your Arduino is through a parallel connection. And don't worry, of course, if that doesn't make sense right now, I've got lectures that will cover that. But the parallel method is a method that requires way too many pins to be occupied on your Arduino Uno. And because of that, I recommend and I also demonstrate the use of a device like this, which is an adapter. It connects to your LCD screen using a parallel interface, and then you connect the adapter to your Arduino using a serial interface. It only takes two pins for the data and another two pins for power. And I've soldered this device onto just a normal 2 by 16 LCD screen, so that it's always permanently connected like that. So uh, you will need to get at least one LCD screen like this, 2 by 16 characters, and a backpack to convert the parallel interface into a serial interface. And the very last thing is something like this, which is a shield from other fruit, you get the parts in a bag and then you solder them together onto the, the PCB. And this is a shield that connects onto your Arduino uh, like, oops, <laughs> like this. Just plug it in. And then what you've got is an LCD screen with the capability of a multicolor backlit as well. So you can have colorful uh, LCD screen and lots of buttons that you can use to create a nice user interface for your gadget. So not strictly necessary, but if you are interested in having a gadget that does things depending on so you, which button you press on its, uh, on this, LCD button shield, then get an LCD shield as well with the buttons from Adafruit. And you will need resistors. With the projects that we'll be playing with, you, you only need a small number of resistors and even values. So you will need resistors at say 10 kilo ohms to use as pull downs or pull ups and you need resistors at about 220 ohms to protect your LEDs. So that's about it as far as parts are concerned. Let's have a look at the next lecture now. I'll give you a quick tour of just the very few tools that you will also need.